Hey, Luna. Hey, Tarantula. Oh my gosh, I just saw the coolest thing. I was down by the creek, and then I saw this crazy looking worm thing, and then I got down closer to it, and I noticed it actually had these little legs. Mm -hmm. So it must not have been a worm. I wonder what it is. But I have no idea what it was. Well, I'm just standing here, and I came upon this tree, and it has the coolest red peely bark. Sometimes I wish I knew the names of things so that way I could find answers to my questions. Like, what kind of birds live in this tree? Yeah. Or why does the bark peel like that? Hmm. And also, if you knew the names of it, then you could talk to other people about it too. Like, yeah. I would love to be able to tell my parents, like, oh, I saw this particular type of salamander and they would know what I was talking about. You can learn a lot from exploring nature without a field guide. But sometimes, after observing a living thing, you want to be able to communicate with other people about what you found, or learn more about it. And to do that, you want to know its commonly used name. That's when it can be really useful to know how to use a field guide. Look at this bookshelf. Oh my gosh, so many different field guides. Hmm. Here's Western reptiles and amphibians. And I think what I found might have been a reptile or an amphibian. So I'll take a look at this book. Cool. And this one looks good, the Pacific Coast Tree Finder. I wonder if I'll find my tree in here. Wow, there's so many different kinds of trees. How am I supposed to find which one I'm wanting to identify? I don't know, I'm having the same problem. There's so many animals in here. What do you think these two should do differently? If you've used a field guide before, what advice would you give them? Before you use the field guide, you should make and record observations about the organism you're trying to identify. Pay attention to size, shape, color, and pattern. Also note where you saw it. What is the surrounding habitat like? Oh, well, I did draw a leaf from the tree I'm trying to identify in my nature journal. Wanna I see, see Tarantula? Yeah. Well. Well, I took a picture of my salamander or whatever it was um, when I was out there. And I also took some notes on my notes on my phone. Wow. About what I remember it doing and where I found it too. If you have an organism nearby that you want to identify, pause the video here to make notes of your observations. Okay, so we've taken some notes about our observations. Now are we ready to use our field guide? One more thing first. Before using a field guide for the first time, it's helpful to read the how to use this guide section. Most field guides have them because it's useful to understand how the guide was designed to be used. This book does have some good information in the front about how to use the field guide. Yeah, this one does too. If you have a field guide nearby, Look near the beginning and see if you can find instructions about how to use it. You can pause the video now to read that section. Some field guides use a dichotomous key. To use a dichotomous key, follow the set of choices until you find your organism. You have to start with the first choice, then go where it leads you. Dichotomous keys are like flowcharts. All right, let's see. I have two options at the top here. Leaves like needles, leaves not like needles. I'm gonna go with this one, leaves not like needles. And then I have two more choices. There are three or more veins of equal size branching out at the leaf base. Hmm. Or the main veins branch off from a single large central vein. Yeah, I'm gonna go with this one. Leaves have smooth edges. Mm, no, it wasn't very smooth. What's this choice? Leaves have serrated edges with teeth or notches. Yeah, that's the one. The leaf stem or the whole leaf is wooly or very hairy. I don't think so. The leaf and its stem are not hairy or wooly. Yeah, it wasn't hairy. Oh my gosh, it was a madrone tree. After you find your organism, 
double check the identification by looking at photos of the organism online or in another guide. I want to double check to make sure it is really a madrone tree. So I got this other field guide and it has pictures in it. Yeah, it's definitely a madrone tree. Now it's your turn. Pause the video here to identify this leaf using this dichotomous key. Other field guides are based on pictures. When using these, it's important to pay attention to all the details you noticed. In order to use a picture matching guide like the one that I'm holding here, um, you're going to take the drawing that you drew earlier or the picture you took earlier and compare it to the pictures on the picture matching guide. Be sure that you're paying really close attention to all the little details like the color and the size and any notes that you took or any notes that are next to the picture. Um, those can all be really helpful in helping you figure out what organism it was that you saw. So the organism I saw definitely wasn't the same shape as these. These look more like frogs to me. What I saw looked more like a worm with little, little legs. So I don't think it was these frogs. Um, I also noticed that there was no orange on the belly of my organism. Um, my organism had like a gray belly with like spots on it. So I don't think it was the rough skin newt or the Encetina. And then also it was really little. It was probably only the size of my pinky, maybe a little bit longer, but definitely skinnier. So I don't think it was this California giant salamander either. And those legs were so little. And I noticed that this California slender salamander has little legs. So I think it was this one. Hey Redwood. Do you think I can use this in Mendocino where my parents live when I go to visit them? I'm not so sure about that. Different field guides are for different places, so there might be amphibians in Mendocino that don't live here. Oh yeah, this guide does say it's just for the amphibians at Westminster Woods. Sometimes an organism's range or where it lives can be a big clue as to what it is. Often two organisms look very similar but live in different places. If your guide gives range maps, that can be a really helpful tool. Try using this picture guide to identify this animal we found at camp. Hey, Tarantula, I found out that my tree is a madrone. I'm really excited. I'm gonna go to the library and see what books I can find about the madrone tree. Nice, that's awesome. I found out that my uh, salamander, it was a California slender salamander. And I think I'm going to go online and look it up and see if I can learn more facts about it. Cool! Mm -hmm. Now that you've experienced using field guides with Luna and Tarantula, you can use a field guide to explore living things near you. But Redwood, where can we find field guides? Good question, Luna. You can find field guides at a local library, at a nature center or park visitor center, or you can use online identification helpers or smartphone apps. Oh yeah, I have an app on my phone called Merlin Bird ID and it helps me identify birds. That's a good example, Tarantula. Check the video description for some examples of websites and apps that can help you identify living things. Now that you know how to use a field guide, it's your turn to find and identify an organism. Remember to make and record observations before trying to identify the living thing. Pay attention to the details you notice. Also remember the how to use this guide section. It can be really helpful to understand your guide. And check the range of the organism in the guide to make sure it lives where you are. Once you know your organism's name, you are ready to communicate with other people about what you have discovered. You can also look up more interesting facts about your organism. What will you discover?